Hello everyone. The following talk is based on the paper Candidate Recalls via Pascal Determinant Cubes. My name is Imbar Ben Yaakov, and this is a joint work with Bill Cohen and Anand Kumar Narayana. The talk will consist of the following main parts, starting with definitions and some historical background. Three codes are combinatorial structures introduced by Leonard Schulman in 1993 and are a key ingredient in interactive coding schemes. A tree code is an edge coloring of a complete rooted tree of depth n, in which each message uniquely encodes a walk from the root to a leaf. When we think of a tree code as a mapping, the arity of the tree represents the size of its input alphabet, sigma, and the number of colors represent the size of its output alphabet, pi. Here in the illustration, the tree code is binary and has five colors. For example, if we take n to be 4 and a message x to be 0110, then x encodes the unique path from the root to a leaf, which represented here by the bolded path. The encoding of a message is the sequence of colors we get from following this path. So here, the encoding of x is red, green, blue, red. Three codes have two parameters to be considered. The first parameter is the rate, which is defined in the natural way. The second is the distance. To better understand this parameter, let's come back to the illustration. We consider any two vertices of equal depth, and we measure the fraction of different colors they have in the path from their least common ancestor to them. For example, if we consider the following vertices U and V, their least common ancestor is W, and their distance is one half since they have a different coloring for the first edge in the considered path and the same color for the second. This process is required to be done for any pair of vertices in the same depth. The distance of the tree is taken to be the minimum distance over all of its vertices. We say that the tree code is asymptotically good if it has a constant rate and a constant distance that are bounded away from zero. We also consider the efficiency of the tree code. That is, the maximum time it takes to compute the output of the tree code over all possible messages as a function of the length n. We say that the tree code is explicit if it can be evaluated in time poly n. And the last note is that every time we talk about the tree code, we have in mind a family of tree codes, one per depth n. As part of his seminal work in 1993, Schulman proved that asymptotically good tree codes exist but this proof does not provide an explicit construction. Surprisingly, the number of colors that are required for this task is very small. It was proved by Cohen and Samoha that four colors suffice and are necessary for constructing an asymptotically good record. Moreover, they prove the existence of four colored record with a non-vanishing distance. The problem of constructing an asymptotically good record has drawn a lot of attention over the years. This table presents some of the constructions we have these days. The state of the art is a construction by Cohen, Hapter, and Schulman from 2018. Note that when epsilon is taken to be one over log n, they get an explicit tree code that has a non-vanishing distance and a rate of one over log log n. Despite the significant progress, presenting an explicit construction of, for a symptotically good tree code remains a major open problem. It appears that even proposing a plausible construction is a difficult task. Prior to our work, only one candidate appeared in the literature due to Moore and Schulman in 2014. In our work, we present a new candidate. Since our work, it stands the state of the art construction by Cohen, Hacker, and Schulman, or CHS, I will first briefly introduce their construction. CHS makes use of the Newton basis. This is the basis for the space of univariate polynomials with real coefficients. The Newton basis consists of polynomials of the form x choose k for any positive integer k. Note that for any positive integer d, the set that highlighted in green forms the basis for the vector space of univariate real polynomials of the degree at most d. The Newton basis is useful in the tricode regime due to its online nature. 
for any real univariate polynomial f when f is expanded in the Newton basis, for any positive integer k, f of k is only depends on its first k coefficients. Since for any coefficient with a larger index k plus j, it holds that k choose k plus j is equal to zero. First, CHS constructed the tree code over the integers. Let n be a positive integer. Given a message m of length n, let f be the polynomial of minimal degree that interpolates on the following points. Now consider the expansion of f in the Newton basis. On time t, the tree code outputs the tuple mt gamma t, where mt is the t's input symbol and gamma t is the coefficient of the Newton polynomial x choose t. Note that this is well defined since one can prove that for any index i, gamma i is an integer. PHS proved the TCZ as distance of one half. This was proved using the LGB lemma, which says the following. Let T and C be strictly increasing sequences of non-negative integers, and let MTC be the S by S matrix whose i just entry is given by T i choose T j. Then the determinant of MTC is non-zero if and only if for every index i, T i is smaller or equal to T i. We will refer to sequences T, C that satisfy the above properties by legal sequences. In addition, to indicate that for every index i, T i is smaller or equal to T i, we will simply say that T is smaller or equal to T. Recall that T, C, Z is a tree code over the integers. To reduce its input alphabet to binary, PHS applied their tree code recursively until they reach that goal. However, this recursion has a cost. Since its depth is log log n, it causes the ray to vanish. In our work, we try to improve the result by considering that construction for TCZ while avoiding the expensive recursion, aiming to surpass the log log n barrier. A naive approach for doing so is to work over a finite field FP, where P is polynomial in N. If this can be done while preserving the distance of TCZ, standard techniques can be applied to reduce the alphabet to binary, and by that, obtain an explicit and binary asymptotically good tree code. For this task, we need an analog of the LGB lemma for small finite fields. This is the same lemma as presented before. The only difference is that here we require the existence of a prime p that is polynomial in n, and that the determinant of MTC does not vanish modulo that prime. However, we believe there is no such analog, and we provide a heuristic and computational evidence to support this intuition. One heuristic reason is that for any n, there are exponentially many pairs of legal sequences we must consider. Unless there exists some hidden structure, one would expect that for any prime p that is polynomial in n, about one over p fraction of the pairs will satisfy that p divides the determinant of MTC. In addition, we provide some numerical evidence. For any n from 6 to 16, we conducted an exhaustive search to find the least prime that satisfies the analog of the LGB lemma for small finite fields. The results are presented in the following table. One can see that this prime grows extremely fast with n, where when n has the small value of 16, the respective prime is larger than 250,000. This growth seems to be exponential or even super exponential in n. Therefore, we took a different approach. Instead of considering a single determinant for any pair of legal sequences, we did the following. Let x1 to xs be symbolic variables. Then define phi tc of x1 to xs be the determinant that presented in the slide. Comparing phi tc to the determinant of mtc, we can see that they are similar. But phi tc is an integer polynomial, while the determinant of mtc is an integer. For a prime p, we define the polynomial phi tc mode p to be phi tc when its coefficients are taken modulo p. Now we put first the Pascal determinant cubes for PDC conjecture, which states that there exists a universal constant EP, such that for every integer n and prime p that is larger than n to the power of EP, the following holds. 
For every S and every pair of legal sequences, TC with even entries such that C is smaller or equal to T, there exist Boolean values X1 to XS such that phi TC mode P when evaluated over X1 to XS is non-zero. We restricted the pairs of legal sequences to have even entries since otherwise PTC has many trivial roots we wish to avoid. In addition, even though we don't have a reason to believe that some irregularities occur for small values of S, we put forth a relaxation of the PDC conjecture that avoids these irregularities if exist. The changes are highlighted in red. In our work, we present a construction that relies on the correctness of the asymptotic PDC conjecture. If the conjecture holds, our candidate construction provides an asymptotically good record. Now, I'll introduce our candidate construction. Taking a polynomially large prime P that is provided by the PDC conjecture, we define the record TC as follows. Given a message M, we defined FT to be a polynomial in the Newton basis. To make sure that FT is not too sparse, we make use of the record by Gerrits et al. We first apply the record over the given message and use the output symbols as coefficients. This action enables the relaxation of the PDC conjecture. Then on time t, we output the t's coefficient gamma 2t and two evaluation points of ft. In our paper, we prove that if the PDC conjecture or its relaxation holds, then tc is asymptotically good. To support the conjecture, we provide a numerical evidence, a heuristic argument, combinatorial arguments from planar pathways, and arguments that are based on well-studied heuristics from arithmetic geometry. To better understand the supporting evidence I'll present next, I will first emphasize the difference between the naive approach we considered earlier and the PDC conjecture. Another way to think of the naive approach for reducing the alphabet size is to find a prime P that is polynomial in N, such that for every pair of legal sequences, TC satisfying that C is smaller or equal to T, phi TC mode P is not zero when evaluated on the origin. In contrast, to allow our candidate record to be asymptotically good, it suffices that there exist some Boolean values X1 to XS, such that phi TC mode P when evaluated on X1 to XS is not zero. Put differently, our construction fails only if phi TC mode P vanishes over the entire Boolean hypercube, instead only on its origin. In similar to the experiment we conducted for the naive approach, we conducted an exhaustive search to find the least prime satisfying that for every pair of legal sequences, that have even entries and satisfy that C is smaller or equal to T, there exist Boolean values X1 to XS, such that phi TC mode P is not zero when evaluated on X1 to XS. As we can see, the primes found are very small in comparison with N, and the growth seems to be linear in N. For comparison, here again is the table we got from the experiment we conducted for the naive approach. We now complement the computational evidence with a theoretical analysis of our conjecture using tools from combinatorics and arithmetic algebraic geometry. The starting point of our analysis is to prove that the integer polynomials PTC are not identically zero. To this end, we devise lattice path graphs with indeterminates as edge weights and call the LGV lemma on their path matrices. This implies that phi TC are non-zero polynomials. In fact, they are non-zero on every point of the Boolean hypercube. Our conjecture is true if for our chosen small prime P and every pair of legal sequences, phi TC mode P is non-zero at some point of the Boolean hypercube. We further prove that TTC mode P is non-zero, which we again infer to lattice pathway with indeterminates and the LGV lemma. Therefore, it defines a hypersurface in the S-dimensional space over the finite field Fp. To analyze our conjecture, we study the intersection of the hypersurface defined by TTC mode P and the Boolean hypercube. 
Our conjecture is true if this intersection is not the whole Boolean hypercube. Our primary tool in studying this intersection is the point counting method by Fouvry based on cuts from more exponential sums over hypersurfaces. The primary lesson we advocate from this arithmetic geometric techniques is qualitative and not quantitative. There should be no arithmetic obstruction to equidistribution of the zeros of the hypersurfaces defined by our polynomials in the Boolean hypercube, suggesting our conjecture may hold. With this, I will end the talk. Thank you very much for listening.